I have today off work because it's a bank holiday. I have this brilliant idea to do a reading vlog. Therefore, I'm going to do a reading vlog. But I've left the book that I'm reading downstairs, so we'll just show a picture here. And basically, I'm reading My Grandmother Sends Her Regards and Apologises by Frederick Barkman. I'm 30 pages into this. It was a book I received from the Willoughby Book Club last year. So far, I found it funny. It sounds as though it's going to be somewhat sentimental, but I have this feeling it might remind me of Joanna Cannon in a good way. The dog is here. Hello, Floss. <laughs> stop, stop. Okay. The dog may be quite present for this part of the video. So, okay, we'll go, we'll, we'll put the book over here. Um, difficult to do left-handed. I have now reached page 203 of My Grandmother Sends Her Regards and Apologises by Frederick Barkman, and I have to say, it is somewhat sad. I said yesterday I, that I imagined it was going to end up reminding me of Joanna Cannon. It doesn't do that, because at the start, the first 50 pages of this book are funny, they're hilarious, they're brilliant. And then something that I thought was going to happen does happen. And then the young girl is left to try and make sense of her grief over her grandmother's death. And uh, it has been a bit of the emotional ride, really. And let the dog get down. And I've found myself being reminded of the deaths of older relatives in my family and the grief that surrounded those deaths. And I went to Costa today to meet my mother after work and I started reading this and then it got to the funeral and I put the book down because that is not something I want to read in public because whilst I haven't cried at a book in nearly three years, there is absolutely no way that I intend to do that in public should it happen. Um, and it's not so much that the book is emotional, it's just, well, it is emotional, it's sentimental and you have to cope with the, the you know, this young child going through their grief at the loss of the one major friend and figure in their life. and. It's more being reminded of my own grief and um, the people that you end up missing and have missed. And she said something a lot in that she, she doesn't feel as though she's going to ever stop missing her grandmother, even though she's only known her for seven years. Her grandmother's been there her entire life. And it just reminded me of the people and the fact that there were people in my life who died before I hit the age of 10. And it's not so much missing them, but thinking about the things in your life that they have missed and how much of an impact that person had. So uh, I have to say, Frederick Barkman's done a great job in 205 pages to have me experiencing every single facet of grief that I ever experienced in my life before. Um, not how I plan to spend um, my few days off work, but hopefully I will finish it tonight and then I can move on to something exponentially happier. This morning, I took Floss for a walk. That's my sister's dog. So I haven't really got much reading done. I've been editing a video and that should be online today. I've also s discovered this morning that I had the dentist today, something that I'd forgotten despite the fact they texted me on Friday. But after the dentist, I decided to treat myself to a trip to Waterstones whilst I waited to go and meet my mother. And naturally there were just some books that I had to purchase. So rather than do a haul, I thought I'd just show them to you. Firstly, I got a book that I have never heard of before. And that is The Wellworth Beauty by Michelle Roberts. It seemed quite reminiscent of some of the more historical novels that I've enjoyed than the ones I didn't. And so technically I bought this because of another book. So I'll put this down. I bought this book because I bought this book, which is The Doll Factory by Elizabeth McNeil. And if you 
watch Simon over at Savage Reads, then you will have seen the video where she is making pots and they're talking about this book. And I watched that this morning and immediately knew that, knew that I had to go out and find this book. And I did. It was at Waterstones. Apparently this edition is signed. And so once I purchased, once I picked this book up, because of how I felt about this, when I saw this, and this isn't a book that I've ever heard of, I felt like I had to purchase it. Because, I don't know whether you know this about me, but last year I stopped looking at book lists because I felt as though they were kind of ruining my reading enjoyment because I was always knowing, because I always knew what books were coming out, I knew which ones were popular, which ones were having good write-ups, which were having bad, and it was really stopping me from making my own decisions about books because I I wasn't thinking about the books I was buying anymore, I was just getting the ones that I'd been told were popular and that I wasn't enjoying the books because they weren't really for me but they were what other people enjoyed. So I decided that to try and read more books that I hadn't heard of and so I actually ended up putting one book down because I'd heard of that one and whilst I want to read it and it sounds right up my street, um, I thought I would test something that I haven't heard of before. And then I got Lanny by Max Porter. Whilst I know people are talking about this book and I have no idea what it's about, I really got something out of grief is the thing with feathers and so I actually wanted to get this book and it was there and so I got it. I'm not sure whether any of these are going to end up getting read this week because I did kind of have my entire TBR for this month planned out and there are a few books that I own that I'm trying to get through. Um, so I don't know why I went and bought these because I am trying to reduce my TBR somewhat. Um, but sometimes these things happen. Um, I'll possibly speak to you tomorrow. I don't know whether I've got to walk floss again tomorrow. Um, but we've also got the first Poets and Pints in Macclesfield. So that should be fun. I think it's safe to say that I didn't vlog since Tuesday and it's now Friday. There are not that many reasons for this, basically. I finished reading my grandmother sends her regards and apologises by Frederick Bachman. And as I was talking about that book, I told you about the fact that it was making me go over all the grief of these relatives that I lost as a child, which was not nice. It was not a fun experience for me. And this was making it difficult for me to figure out how to talk about the book because I don't know whether my reaction to the book is solely based on the fact that I went through that grief as a child and was being reminded of it. So I would would not be able to give that a review that wasn't maybe biased because of that. So I wanted to do a discussion about that. That was Tuesday night. Wednesday morning, I got up and read Death and the Penguin by Andrei Karkov and Dark Humour, a writer um, called Victor, He's writing obituaries of people who aren't dead yet, but when he starts writing the obituaries, certain people start turning up dead, and the paper ends up using the obituaries he's written. Very dark, also comic as well, and I don't have that book to show you because as I was reading it, I was reminded of the writing style of another writer from the writer's group. Yesterday, the writer's group took place, and so I lent him the book. And then also on Wednesday, I read The Perseverance by Raymond Antrobus, a poetry collection um, discussing deafness and society's perception of deaf people, Raymond Antrobus's life experiences, being Jamaican and English. I know this is basically everything that is said on the blur, but these are the topics that are discussed in there. I found this caused me to think a lot more about in terms of my perception of poetry. This is because I always talk about the fact that I like imagining the way poetry would sound and seeing the poet play around with sounds, which, if we're thinking about it, is almost a bit ableist language, really, because I'm a person who can hear. I'm a person who can understand these sounds and think about the way that they click together. Yes, I understand deaf people would be able to do this as well. But it's almost easier for me to do that. And so 
without talking about the poetry yet, just talking about the content, I ended up with cause to think about what it would be like in terms of writing this poetry that I have always thought about the sound behind and think what about the poetry of someone who's had sound removed. It's going to be a completely different experience. And so, yes, this one did cause me to think a considerable amount. And then Wednesday evening, I talked about the fact that I, we were going to the first Poets and Pints at the Button Warehouse in Macclesfield, and I might get some footage, and naturally didn't get any footage. Um, the mother and I got mildly pie-eyed. I read some poetry. A fun night was had by all. And then Thursday happened, and I started reading Spring by Ali Smith, finally. This... There's something about Ali Smith's writing that I just find inspiring. I talk about an album by V.V. Brown called Glitch. I've talked about it previously because it inspires me to be more creative in the fact that it is extremely experimental in terms of sound, in terms of content. It is superb. And I get the same feeling with Ali Smith. There's something refreshing about her writing. There's some sort of energy within the prose. And I know of writers that I'm friends with who don't get on with her. And I still don't understand them. It's very much, what are you talking about? What don't you get? And I've read 100 pages so far yesterday because writer's group happened, had to go to my grandmother's, all that fun stuff. Um, but... Yeah, I, I know it's a... I always read her books quickly because I just find something frenetic within the prose that lends it to me reading it incredibly fast and just wanting to absorb this entire book. I really don't know how to go about this whole reading vlog thing, clearly, because I last recorded a clip on Friday, it's now Tuesday, and so I really just want to draw the week reading vlog to a close. When last we spoke, I was reading Spring by Ellie Smith. I didn't finish that until Sunday. Once again, I really enjoy Ellie Smith's writing, so I was going to enjoy this book. I feel like she is incredibly playful in her prose, and the story was very apt. I know that each of these is dealing with the world, our country as it is today, and I think she captures that divide well. She's done it in the two previous books and I think that I am going to go back and see the link there because there is definitely a separation between characters in this book in these books and I want to see whether there are any connections that I might not have noticed you know go a bit more in depth into them in my last video I had to apologize for my dog snoring this time I'm going to apologize for the border collie pup who won't stop throwing things around <sighs> anyway so, so yeah, so I found this small book called Dead Man's Bells by Jackie Spry. This is a writer I know who comes to our writers group. It's only 28 pages, so I read this quite quickly. It's the tale of a woman who knows that her husband is having an affair with someone who's recently moved where they're living. And yeah, it's short, it's sweet, it was funny. Um, yeah. And, my most disappointing book of the year so far was Bowl Away by Elizabeth McCracken. I have been looking forward to this book. I pre-ordered it. I got it delivered. Amazon got scuppered this package as well. It was torn, battered, everything. Got a new one. And it was that bad on Sunday. I went to see whether I'd be able to return it. But, but it transpires that I actually purchased this book in March. And I'm sad about it because... I was 90 pages in, and I still didn't feel any connection to the characters at all, and it was this thing where I, from the blurb, I didn't realise this was going to be a family saga that ran on for over a hundred years. But when I compared this book to Homegoing, or Pachinko, or another of the books that does this where they span a very long length of time, I still felt a connection to all the characters. There was no connection here. The writer wrote this book as though she knowingly wanted to keep her readers at a distance. Bertha Truitt could have easily been 
a great character in literature, but she never goes further than the character you meet on the first line. She has a child, she gets married, and at the 90th page, her story has ended, and you're moving on to other characters. But the story was never... Com I didn't feel like I got her story. I felt so frustrated with the story, and I just could not bear to read another 300 pages about these characters. That may have been wrong. If anyone thinks that the story actually ever improved, or they really enjoy it, then feel free to tell me, but know that I will not be reading this book. I'm now in a quandary as to what to read. I'm questioning reading Fool's Quest by Robin Hobb, because I started that, I'm 100 pages in. And I'm also questioning reading Police by Joe Nesbo, or um, Things in Jars by Jess Kidd. I have quite a few books there to read, and I can't figure out what I want to read yet. Um, I should actually probably get some writing done, but you know, it's me. Anyway, I don't think I'll be doing another reading vlog for a while, because I just don't think that I'm good at them. I don't think I do anything of interest. You got to hear about my week though, and isn't that just grand? Anyway, if you've read any of these books and would like to discuss them, please feel free to do so in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video, and until next time, that is all.